Hi, I'm Rob Froney and I'm here to show you how to put ground plane on both sides of your printed circuit board using KiCad 6. Uh, the first thing you want to do is make sure you're on the, the uh, one of the copper layers. I am in the front copper so that's uh, good here. Then you go select this ground plane tool over here and click on it. Then you want to make sure that you're on a, a good grid. You see, if I was on some other grid like, um, you know, this 2.5 millimeters, oh, it actually fits on that one. And it fits on that one. Maybe it would actually fit, but you, often you can't quite hit. Looks like 2.5 millimeters just actually works great. So I'm going to do that. I thought I might have to use 0.5 millimeters. So um, then you click in the corner. And I better do zoom in to make sure. Yeah, that's where I want to click, right there. And when you do that, this box comes up. And you select the other copper layers because you want your ground plane on both sides. Notice it says selecting no net will create an isolated copper island and you do not want to do that. That's worse than nothing at all. So you want to select ground. You could select 5 volts too. I prefer ground because 5 volts, well 5 volts isn't really dangerous, but um, ground is uh, certainly absolutely safe to touch. Now normally this um, layer would be underneath um, some solder mask so you uh, probably won't uh, easily touch it but it's possible as a scratch will happen in the uh, solder mask and somebody touches it so I usually pick ground <clears throat> so then say OK and now uh, notice I'm, I've got this little uh, stringy line here which I can then use to trace out um, the outline of the board and uh, should be pretty easy with this grid here just to get it right on where it needs to be. Don't even have to zoom in and out. And you might need to lastly click where you started. Notice now that it added a zone. You can see the zone right here in the little cross hatching. We're not done yet, however, because we need to fill that zone. And so what you do is you right click and you select zones and then you say fill all zones or you could hit the B key uh, if that's uh, you're set up with the same hotkeys I am so you do that and it works a little bit and then it uh, fills the zone you can see here notice that the zone left a space between the copper and this pad here but it didn't between the copper and this pad, it actually connected that pad because that pad is ground. And the, the purpose of this ground plane is actually to keep one trace from acting like an antenna and coupling to another trace. So this trace and that trace are parallel. If there were no ground plane in between, it's possible that the signal from this trace could couple over to this trace and then you'd have the wrong, you know, you'd have an extra noise on this trace from the signal from that trace. And that's undesirable. However, if there's ground plane, the electric field starts on this trace and it ends on the ground plane, which is zero volts. And similarly for this trace, it starts on this, this trace and it goes to the ground plane. And so the two signals don't couple. On the other hand, if I forgot to ground this thing and left it uh, with no net, so it was an isolated island and was not connected to ground, what would happen is this trace would quickly couple to that trace, or to the ground plane, because it's so close and it's not grounded. It's just, you know, floating, so you can couple anything you want to it. And then, of course, a ground or copper is a good conductor, so it conducts over to this side of the trace, and then it would easily jump across, you know, a couple across this really short distance here, much better than this the trace would couple to that trace in the first place if you hadn't even put ground plane in there. So that's why you want to make sure and connect ground uh, every time you do one of these things. It's just good design practice to include a ground plane on every printed circuit board you make.